Do you wonder how John Dalton was able to make accurate measurements of mass in his experiments? Well, he probably had a balance of this type. Balances of this particular style made their appearance in the late 1700s. And since Dalton died in 1844, he probably had one of these. This particular balance was built in 1890 along the same designs as the type that probably would have been used by Dalton and other chemists of that period. Let me show you some of its features. First of all, it is in a case of glass so that you can see inside of it, but air currents will not cause the pans to swing back and forth. How would the chemist work in here? Well, they would open this and there was a latch here that would hold the window open while they were adding weights or adding materials to the balance. And then the lever could be pressed and the window lowered again. But for our purposes, I'm going to remove the window so that I don't have to worry about hitting it or something of that type. Now, one of the first things that had to be done was the balance had to be level. In order to balance, because if the balance were not level, then the pin would not swing regularly across the front and the weights would not be accurate. Today, or in the, in the 1900s, the popular way to do this was to level it was to have an air bubble in a little vial of the liquid here. But they didn't use that. What they used at the time of Dalton was a plum bob. Now, I don't know if you can see the plum bob or not, but it's right here. It is that swinging piece right there. That's your plum bob. Do you see it swinging there? And it needed to line up exactly with the point right below it. And when it did, they knew the balance was level. In order to get the balance level, they would adjust the screws on the legs to raise and lower each side or both to raise and lower the front. They would then place the item to be weighed on one side and the weights on the other. Now the weights generally ran from something like 500 grams like this down to very, very small ones, like for possibly one gram, like this tiny one right here. Some of the more modern ones, and I don't know if Dalton had them this small or not, some of the more modern ones had tiny little pieces of material that weighed 5 milligrams, 10 milligrams, 20 milligrams, 50 milligrams, 100 milligrams, and 200 milligrams. There were even some that very possibly weighed different amounts, but this is what I have. For example, here's a 200 milligram piece of metal. It's engraved on there. And they would place the material to be weighed on one side, and they would begin adding weights. Now, how did they keep the pans from swinging? They used a dampening device right here. And this dampening device allowed the pans to sit on the bottom. And then when they were ready to weigh, they would lift the beam right here by moving this lever. Watch that beam come up. And then the pans would be free to swing. Now you had to be very, very careful with this device because those finely honed knife edges up here in the beam were very sensitive to any changes, and you didn't want to bang them around and notch those beams. So you would rest the balance, and you would change the masses the over here, and then you would check again to see if it were being weighed right. Balances developed in the later 1900s had a platinum rider that moved along the beam to give an even greater degree of accuracy and the, a greater degree of sensitivity. Well, I want to show you the knife edges, and to do that, I'm going to have to take the balance apart. So I'm going to reach up here and remove the pans, and then bring out the beam. 
Now, I want you to notice on this beam that there is a triangular area right here. And this triangular area is the knife edge. The knife edge probably in Dalton's time would have been made of steel, but the more modern ones were made of sapphire or agates. So folks, let me explain then. You should not ever think that these chemists and physicists were lacking in ingenuity in designing the equipment that allowed them to make many of the measurements and hence the observations that they made.